London, you're 16 and you've already written, produced, and directed six films and your work has been shown at AnomalyCon. That's a convention for what? Uh, steampunks, um, and which is steampunk is what I'm wearing and it's sort of a subculture. But uh, I have, um, I was a guest there last year um, and I'm going to be a guest here, that, here um, again this March. Um, and I showed my films there and I was on panels. You're a big name at Wyoming History Day. Your documentaries have been, have done very well. Um, what would you, how has Wyoming History Day helped you in your career? Uh, my first one was on Einstein's theory of relativity um, and that was, um, I did it in iMovie and everything but I, I was still really good and this last year I did it on the Hindenburg, um, which I made a completely black and white documentary that was in style of an old newsreel. And this was also shown at AnomalyCon. Yes, right? that was also shown at AnomalyCon. Well, let's take a look at a clip from that. Great. Investigators explored more than 20 possible causes for the disaster, leading up to the question, was the Hindenburg tragedy an accident or was it sabotage? Accident theory explanations included a sudden static electricity buildup called brush discharge, a weather phenomena similar to ball lightning called St. Elmo's fire, or a spark from the engines igniting flammable paint. Sabotage theory explanations included the ship being shot from the ground, bombing by a plane, and a planted time bomb. We're going to shift gears a little bit now, and uh, um, I want to ask you about your wardrobe selection today. Um, what are you wearing and why? Well, so first of all, um, it, well, so this is steampunk, and first of all, uh, if you're familiar with it, um, uh, you will laugh at that that you said um, shift gears to this because it is um, that is one of the big parts of it. Um, it is a subgenre that has been around for quite some time now, but it's slowly gaining popularity. Um, it's a it, it's like what the Victorians thought the future would be like. It's like if you think about how you know retro um, from the 70s or the 60s. Um, you know, that sort of um, future land and Disney World sort of thing. It's like that, but older. Um, so it's lots of clanky gears and, and steam-powered things. Um, but it started generally, originally was more of literature, uh, and there, that which was inspired a lot by Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. I, I personally sort of adopted it as a way of living. I, I really... Um, enjoy the sort of civility of the Victorian era mixed with sort of a more modern um, touch of, you know, it, it's sort of a romanticized version of it, what, what we would like it to have been. And steampunk has influenced your filmmaking too. In fact, yes. For Warrant was a very successful film that you you wrote, produced, and directed when you were 14, and it, it uh, was shown in a theater, or lots of people saw it. In fact, we're going to see a little clip. Can you set that up for us? Yeah, so I, it, with Forewarned, I tried to use, story-wise, um, I tried to use a lot of the most sort of um, really steampunk elements, um, really almost cliche things. Um, so this scene is um, of Ali, who's an automaton, um, who, who's played by Ali as an Olympia in the film. Um, and... Uh, an airship pirate captain, um, and they are trying to hunt down his crew, um, and they get help from a police chief and a um, and a detective who do not know that he's actually the captain. All right, let's give it a shot. Get off!
I say, what's the meaning of this, Janus? I was wondering the same thing, George. Uh, uh, I just got a bit excited, all right? But I know where they're off to next. They're off to the Ether Wharf Warehouse District. It's where they'll go, I know. We need to go there, too. Let's go. Let's go. There'll be root beer, all right? Hey, Olivia. What are you plotting, you git? So, Lyndon, what are you working on now? Um, now I'm working on a remake of A Trip to the Moon, which is a 1902 silent film by George Melier. Um, the movie, I, I've always liked this um, old movie, um, and I, so I remade it into a full length um, color, sound, um, movie with back character backstories and lots of things, um, but I tried to take a lot of the original messages um, from the original movie, um, sort of, the original movie very much made fun of, of science and it made fun of, um, and, and you know, there was, of course, they went to the moon and they could breathe and there were plants, um, and they have a real parody of these scientists in the beginning, um, I, so I really do that. Um, it's also, um, people have said it's an absurdist film, um, so, you know, it's very, it's, it's very wacky. Um, uh, and, but with this one, we have definitely a very t a technology upgrade um, from the last one, and um, I'm really happy with this one in terms of look. It, it's All right, let's take a look at the wackiness. This next piece is one of the lesser known twinkle variations. Got mail. Can't you see I'm trying to perform here, you bleeding idiot? Well, I thought you'd like to know as soon as possible that you've been invited to the moon. What just happened? A strange creature bit me. They're called selenites. How do you know that? And this will be premiered? Yes, um, like we're warned, this will be shown at the YF Theater, um, completely free to the public. Um, and that is going to be February 25th, um, this next com coming Saturday. Um, and it will be at 3 o'clock. Um, and everyone should come and, uh, and see it. Uh, London Homer Wombie, it has been a pleasure.